Tim Orman and Bobby Jacobs are patrolmen in the southwest section of Yonkers. There they go. Today, they police the very project where Tim grew up 20 years ago. Well, I moved out of here in about 66, 67, when I was 6 or 7 years old. This is a totally different place. You see what the hallways are like. Back then, they used to make the people that lived there go and sweep the hallways, clean them out. Now there's all sorts of urine, feces all over, crack piles. That's all new to this place. So what do they use this for? Have their little crack parties. Wine parties, they'll crash in here. You, know? you gotta remember something, Harold. These complexes people live in. They're decent people. Most of the problems that occur there are from the dealers who don't live there. Everybody has a right to live and live safely. Most of the people down there are decent human beings. They're just enslaved by, by drug dealers. You're in fear, you know. Once you get inside your door, you feel better. But as far as living here, it's, it's nowhere, no place to raise a child. No place. Shirley Sneed no is a single mother who agrees with no Officer Jacobs. So how was school today, Jason? She knows how it feels to be trapped. In the our class business is easy. We took a test. She's lived in these projects for two years. But Shirley, we're, we're right now behind your apartment building up. What happens here at night? Okay, from my kitchen window, I can see transactions. I can see... You see drug transactions. Right. I can't tell you exactly what they're selling. I can't see that, but I see the money being passed and who's uh, running... You hear you know? gunshots around here frequently? Yeah. There was gunshots in my building and I called the police. And I told them that I heard gunshots, and they said to me, well, what floor? You know, I said, well, I'm not going to stick my head out the door to find out what floor the gunshots are. And I never saw them come. You never saw them come? No. You're describing an atmosphere of fear here. It is. Uh, the building. Where are you, Pooh? See all the ways these guys can run? Need a damn map in here. What kind of activity do you run into out here? Get a lot of calls with shots fired, people dealing drugs in hallways, a lot of fan disputes. But all the fight going on about the low income housing. You guys have to, you cover that area. You, you, uh, you patrol it on a regular basis. We're in every day and every night to all the stuff that they're afraid of. As soon as he pulls away, you follow him. He's gonna bring that People that aren't familiar with it, they'd go in there, they'd be amazed at what goes on. They wouldn't believe that this was America. They just would say like, how the hell did this happen? The new subsidized housing proposed for Yonkers is not the high-rise, high-density type you see here. But fear of images like these has fueled the battle between those who want out of the projects and those east siders who say, yeah. not on my street. Blame it on me. The people on the other side of town have an impression of uh, a crime-infested area, uh, drugs. Uh, and a whole bunch of bad people who live in this complex. And they think that that's what's going to come on the east side of town. Do they have a reason to be? Everybody is not bad. I mean, you, you have quite a few people that work. You know, the work and they raise their children. They're trying to raise their children the right way. You have plenty of people like that. You know, everybody is not bad that lives in the municipal housing. They worry about uh, the neighborhood going down. They worry about graffiti on the walls. They worry about, they say that that's what would happen if minorities or poor people moved into their neighborhood. Okay, graffiti on the wall. My son was about four and he wrote on the wall. I knew it was his little handwriting. He wrote on the wall and I made him take Brillo and Comet and clean it. He has never written on the wall again. This big fight going on, is it racial or economic? What do you think? I think it's racial, really. I think it's racial. The whole idea that they don't want uh, minorities right. on that side of town. I don't think they want us over there, that's all. But I want to know who they are, you know, like, what does your son do? What does your daughter do? Here we go, there's one. He's got cash on him, bro. What do you got here? This money? This is yours. You're not safe here. You know, you walk in here, you have drug addicts downstairs. Small bag containing with appears to be marijuana and 
what we would believe here is heroin. It's 21 bags. We'll check this when we get down. I would love to, you know, be able to walk into an apartment and building and be, feel safe. Here comes today's Duracell battery. And here's yesterday's. Today's are built to last up to 30% longer than the ones we made just a few years back. So you'll be guaranteed a long, happy life. Look for the new Duracell. C&D 4-Packs. Have you been ignoring your skin, Pat? No. Well, look at the dirt your soap missed. Ooh. Now what? Pond's Cold Cream. Pons cleans deep down. Mm. See what your soap left? Looks great. Pons cleans like no soap can. Sometimes your skin gets so dry you can scratch the word dry right on your hand. And the drier your skin, the more you need Vaseline Intensive Care Lotion. It soothes and starts healing dry skin on contact. That's today's Vaseline Intensive Care. 48 hours will continue. Something strange has happened at the convent of Mary Madeline. It's murder we're talking about. Was it murder? Or was it a miracle? Why me? I'm the court appointed psychiatrist. She belongs to God. And I intend to take her away from him. Jane Fonda, Anne Bancroft, Meg Tilly, Agnes of God, tonight. This is CBS. That's right. And she, and she hasn't sung yet. That. She told me. Do you know how many times my husband has looked on the TV and he sees you and that's me? They are veterans of the TV talk show wars. And he goes, boy, oh boy, you mean somebody else is louder than you? I go, yeah. From Donahue to Morton Downey. Wait, Marianne, hey. Get on the bus. Honey. Because remember, we have to try to be able to manipulate this show for our advantage rather than for the advantage of the NAACP. Every show has a chance to sell their side to America. We are not uh, people that don't want people in our town. Let's not look like a bunch of fools. Today, it's people are talking. This isn't, you know, my idea of a nice day is to come down here and, and have to fight for the rights that are really ours. Mary Dorman took off work to be in this audience. We're going to win this case fairly for whatever side. There isn't any side. It's got to be fair for everybody. What we're going to do is split you up. I want 22 people starting to line up in single file. I have, don't have all my guests. I have. Just hold on. All right, well. people, again, very quiet. We're going through a live show right here. This is on the back on two. Ready to pull. No, please, bring them in. Music. Welcome back to People Are Talking. Court. I talk and not you. Excuse me. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's not the question, Mr. Autumn. Hold on. I'm going to ask you.
you to be quiet, sir, or, or I'm going to ask you to leave. So they think they have a hurricane in Texas, do they? The courts found here that Yonkers systematically discriminated against blacks by capitulating to the kind of white majority you see here and putting all the assisted housing in one area. That when this gentleman says, point out, when he said, excuse me, Hold excuse on me, excuse me, excuse me, well, excuse me, excuse me, you know, you know, what we You're have in Yonk is, excuse me, what we Who's have Who just shouted that thing out up here? What? White flight. White flight. White flight. At oh, wait white. a second. Why do you call it white flight if you're not determining this issue on a racial basis? Why isn't it middle class flight? Is, you know what's very interesting about this is there is such subtle racism and they're just it's not... It's not subtle. It, it, but they, don't, they wouldn't admit to, to being say. racist. It's oh, no. Do you want to compromise? This guy, this guy here. Yeah. I don't even live in Texas. They're not going to compromise. compromise. They're going to move out. We do look racist. We get up here and we scream and yell. And we look racist. No, we're not racist. They're just so mad. And we have to go out there and defend the fact that we're not. Yonkers, this way. Thank you for coming. Can okay, we stay for the next show? Sure, we'll get you. If the working class stick together, right. we can beat these rich liberal SOBs. Guys, you don't have as, it in as, there, as a black I'm person sitting up in the audience, I looked up at you and you looked scared. I wasn't afraid. It was just that I found it amazing to see people act, reacting that way towards another person. All welfare people don't steal. All welfare people don't steal. Crime, rape, muggings, and kill you, everything. People who are on welfare coming into your neighborhood, it scares the life out of you. I, I admit those projects are terrible. They should have been fixed. It shouldn't have been like that. But it wasn't our job to fix it. First of all, we didn't know about it. Second of all, we probably wouldn't have cared because it wasn't here. But, you know, the whole country is at fault. Nobody knows unless they live with it or unless it's going to go in your backyard and then everybody cares. And maybe, just maybe when this is over, however it will be over, the people like me are going to make it work, whatever happens. There is one middle class black community on the east side of Yonkers. It's called Runyon Heights. We're very proud of Runyon Heights. Yeah. We're born here, that's why they know where, where we've been coming, to our roots. It's a community made up of people who really worked hard and sacrificed to get here. We fought for everything that we've got. Hmm? Nice neighborhood, it's not very, it's nothing really wrong with the neighborhood. It's a good area to raise your child if you want them in a safe area. You'd want to live in a better place than Runyon High. Everybody seems so close to each other. I mean, all the yeah. people We're seem like to like a big family. Good family. You all ham? <laughs> Yet the neighborhood these people love so well was born of revenge. Runyon Heights was supposed to be a cemetery. Dorothy Downs is a real estate the agent. Herman. I thought you were coming out. How do you do? How do you do? Well, she lives with her 93-year-old father, one of the first people to build a house in the neighborhood. It borders on Homefield. And Homefield was a white area, all white area. And the people objected, like, like they do to everything, to a cemetery being put so close to them. And he told them, you either have a cemetery or he would sell it to, at that time, we were colored he would sell it to blacks. So this is the famous four-foot strip here, finally. <laughs> this is the famous four. It's, a, you know, you don't see it. The people of Homefield bought a four-foot strip of land to seal off the blacks. This is Homefield, and this is Runyon Heights, and this is a four-foot strip that divides us. It goes, runs all the way up. And all here. through the neighborhood, everybody. Just up this line here. Yeah. That's, and this is it. In his desegregation order, Judge Sand cited the strip as a symbol of Yonkers' discrimination. They didn't want, they didn't want the black and the white neighborhood to, uh, to be together. They ran a fence through there. I'm really mad because the fence, they should make the road go all the way through. Even it doesn't, doesn't matter if they're white and we're black. Every north-south street in Runyon Heights is a dead end. From isolation 
came strength and unity. This is an example of it right here. And it's, uh, and it's like a one for all and all, and all for one. That's the way it works. Still, there is tension beneath the neighborhood's happy exterior. Over the years,